Hey folks, and welcome to another YouTube video. Uh, this time I'm gonna tell you all about climbing shoes. Now, these are one of the few tools we use as climbers, especially if you're a boulderer, there's just shoes and chalk and that's it. So pretty important to pick the right pair for us. Now, before I tell you anything, I should specify that it is possible to do any climb in any shoe, but they are built for specific purposes. So some things will be easier in some style of shoe and other things will be a little bit harder in other styles. So let's get into it. So first off, let's talk about different styles of climbing shoe. Now, as you can see, there are a wide range of styles and they're all designed for slightly different purposes. They're also designed for slightly different levels of climber. So I'm gonna go over three broad categories that climbing shoes fall into. And we'll speak a little bit about that first. So first off, we have quite flat soled, stiff shoes. Now, these are often quite good for newer climbers because they give your foot a lot of support. As in, when you stand on a small edge, the shoe does a lot of the work for you and you don't have to have really strong toes in order to stand on a small foothold. The downside of that though is that because they're stiffer soled, they're a little bit less sensitive. Now, um, going completely the other way, we have shoes like these. These are really sensitive. I really like soft, sensitive shoes. Uh, they make it much easier to smear into the wall. And like I say, obviously they're quite sensitive so you can really feel what you're doing. The downside of that though, is that when it comes to standing on small sharp edges and putting a lot of weight on them, the shoe obviously bends a lot more easily. So you have to have really strong feet to compensate for that. And then last category that we'll look at very quickly would be stiff downturn shoes. You can see these are like, almost like a bird's talon. They're particularly good for climbing on overhangs. When you're like, you can, you can imagine me doing this, when I lift my heel up and dig my toe into a foothold, I can really pull on it like that when, I've wear, when I'm wearing stiff, aggressive styled shoes. Uh, the downside though, and they all have downsides, would be when it comes to smearing on the wall and pressing my foot into a volume or something, it's a little bit harder to do it in these than in those nice sensitive shoes that we looked at before. Next, we'll talk a little bit about the different features that shoes have. So they, they all have different features that they're built with. Um, first, let's look at slippers. So main benefit of these are they're so easy to get on and off. They're really comfortable. Often a slipper style shoe that has no specific fastening mechanism is quite comfy to wear. I really like slippers. Quite similar to a slipper style of shoe would be something like this. It's basically a slipper, but it also has a strap to secure your foot into it. Uh, a common issue people sometimes find when wearing a slipper shoe is that when they heel hook something, it could pop off. Sometimes it, it can happen. Whereas if it's got that Velcro strap, that usually keeps them on a bit more securely. Um, then obviously we have ones with more Velcro straps where you can adjust the fit a little bit better. And of course we have lace up shoes. Um, I actually don't wear lace-up shoes very often. Uh, the downside is that they take ages to get on and off. Obviously the positive though, is that you can adjust the fit to your foot really specifically. Let's talk about rubber for the shoes because there are a couple of things for us to think about. One, where the rubber is on the shoe and how that relates to how we can use it. And also what kind of rubber it is. So here's a good one to start with. Uh, these do have rubber all over the heel but they've made it a really hard and slightly more slippery style of rubber. So generally harder rubber is much more durable, but slightly less friction. So actually these shoes, they're not really designing for someone to heel hook in. Whereas uh, a shoe like this, this is a much softer rubber. So it means you get a lot more friction, but it wears away a little bit faster. Uh, in terms of where they've put the rubber as well, you can see on this shoe, they've put rubber all the way up across the toe. That means I can, I can toe hook in them really well. They've also put really sticky rubber on the heel as well. So they're also designed for heel hooking. Last thing for us to talk about is fitting our climbing shoes correctly. Now, this can be a little bit tricky because yes, it's true in a way that if you wear really tight shoes, it can make standing on small holds easier, which sounds really appealing. Everyone would immediately go, well, I'll obviously get really, really tight shoes then. But bear in mind that what I specifically said was, Wearing really tight shoes makes standing on small holds a little bit easier. Not, you can only climb hard stuff in really tight shoes. There are lots of times when really tight shoes might be beneficial, but there are loads of other times where wearing comfy shoes would be the nicer approach. So what I used to do when I was a younger climber is I would work out what the tightest pair of shoes I could possibly fit my foot into was. And then I'd go a full size down from that because I knew the shoes were gonna stretch a little bit. 
And I thought that was going to help me climb harder, but instead, I spent most of my time just hobbling around in these horrendously painful shoes. I could barely touch any footholds with them because it hurt too much. Not the best way to go. So find a balance. Don't go for the tightest shoes you can possibly cram your feet into. Instead, often the advice I give to people is that they should feel comfy enough that you can keep them on your feet and walk around the center for a good 10, 15 minutes or so without it feeling really, really painful. But if the shoes are so comfortable that you think, yeah, I could walk all the way home in these, that's probably a bit too comfortable. So if you're getting your first pair of shoes, don't feel like you need to get a really tight pair of shoes. Don't feel like you need to get a really expensive pair of shoes either. The best advice I can give is that good footwork, which you can learn in cheap, comfortable shoes, good footwork in bad shoes will beat bad footwork in good shoes every single time. So there we go. That's the basics of what you need to know about buying your first pair of climbing shoes. I hope that helps. If you've got any questions at all, ask in the comment section below, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.